everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Another slimline card, this time a vertical slimline card instead of like a landscape, so a portrait one. So for this card, I am using the Simon Says Stamp Be Yourself stamp set. This came out with a kit last year at some point. I honestly don't remember when. <laughs> I did a video and I made a bunch of cards using it and really loved it. And then because of the demand, they released a coordinating wafer die set, which I bought and then haven't had a chance to use it since. So I have had it sitting in like the front of all my stamp sets for months now. So I pulled it out because I thought it'd be really cute to, you know, create some more cards with. And then I started thinking and I was like, ooh, this would be perfect for a slimline card. So that's what I'm going to do. So I started off with some Bristol Smooth cardstock. I put it in my Misty and then I pulled all the little bee images from the set and the little hearts and I stamped them onto the Bristol Smooth cardstock with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I had used my anti-static powder tool first and then stamped the bees and little hearts. And then I coated everything with clear embossing powder. This step isn't always necessary. I just do it mostly out of habit. Um, images like this, I like to do the heat embossing because it just creates that little raised edge which just makes it a little bit easier when coloring because it kind of contains everything. So there's less chance of things smearing. So after I was done heat embossing everything to color them in, I'm just using my Karen brush marker pros. You could use anything. I have shown things like this using just my little distress inks, watercolors, etc., etc. Um, Cause all I'm doing is just, I just scribbled on actually the packaging for the stamps because I still can't find my little Ulta new piece plastic watercolor palettes that are literally like $3. But I've just, I've been refusing to order new ones cause I know the minute I order them, I'm gonna find the other ones. And I don't know where I put them. I haven't been able to find them for months. Anyway, packaging works great though as a little palette. So I scribbled the markers onto my makeshift palette and then I'm just picking it up with my little water brush and painting. That's it. So that's what you could totally use, you know, just dress inks, watercolors, other water-based markers, etc. So the four colors I ended up using was Canary for the yellow, Cool Aqua, which I'm going to use on their wings, black, obviously for the stripes, and then red for the hearts. I started with the yellow. I was very careful with the black. Um, regardless of what you're using, like black is just obviously a very strong color. But with these Karen Brush Marker Pros, that's one of the reasons why I like them so much is the color is very, very intense. Scribbling it this way and then picking up a water brush, it really loosens the intensity. If you want the color intense, you can either layer the colors or do what I've done in other videos and you color a little bit with the marker directly onto the image and then pull it out with the water brush. There's options, but this was the gave me the most control because you're such small images and you know I just I and honestly this is actually the second time doing this because the first time I did end up smearing everything I was just I was having a bad day when I was making this card <laughs> but it was therapeutic because they're so cute and it just makes me happy so did all my watercoloring and then made sure everything was completely dry I was drying it between colors just using my heat tool just again to you know make things a little bit easier it just helps so after everything was completely dry, I taped those coordinating wafer dies into place with just some washi tape. And then I'm gonna run this through my die cut machine so everything is all nice and die cut. And then another die set I'm using is actually the, not Honeybee, the Mama Elephant Slim Card Basics. This is one of the new ones from Mama Elephant that I managed to get my hands on and it actually like showed up. Um, orders to Canada, just everything's disrupted right now. It's just the nature of everything. So anyway. I got it. I've been waiting because I was planning on doing a haul video, all that stuff. I just haven't, I haven't done a haul video in months. But anywho, really wanted to use the die set. So I have the, like the stitched little wafer die from the set just to kind of give me a visual guide. And then I have another piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock. I'm gonna put that in my Misty again. And I used the like honeycomb stamps from that Be Yourself set. And I had them all lined up where I wanted them. I had so many ideas on making this. I thought I was going to stamp them with distress inks or distress oxide inks and then do some ink blending. And then I thought, no, I want to heat emboss them. And then I was going to like, I thought about clear heat embossing them or white heat embossing them. And then I remembered I used the Wendy Vecchi Sunflower Embossing Powder not too long ago in a previous Slimline card. 
So I pulled that out. So I stamped these images with just clear embossing ink and then I coated them with that sunflower embossing powder. Melted that again with my heat tool, as always tilting it kind of back and forth to make sure I got everything melted. With this embossing powder, I don't have it in my big containers. I only keep my most used, like my basics, like my clear, my white, my metallics in the big uh, Systema containers. All my other embossing powders, I just keep them in the container like I've done for years and I just use a coffee filter. It's great. So put the uh, excess embossing powder back in the filter. And then to kind of finish off this background, I'm using that canary yellow Karen brush marker again. Scribbled a bunch of it on the packaging. And then I also scribbled it on the background. Doesn't have to be neat, the color's gonna move anyway. And then I'm just using a big Zen, uh, Royal and Langnickel Zen watercolor brush. This is like a size 12. And picking up that marker off the packaging as well as what I've scribbled onto the actual background and just moving it around, making a mess. I purposely wanted it messy, just going for it. It's gonna look like a hot mess, but when it all comes together, <laughs> it looks great. So kept kind of going back and forth and adding a bit more. That's another another pro for the Karen Brush Marker Pros. Um, I, I find it's very easy to add more color even while things are still wet. A lot, if not most other water-based markers, usually do, it doesn't work very well to try and add more color while things are still wet because the, the wetness of the paper, etc., wants to just kind of wick away the color from the brush, if that makes sense. I just, I've tried it so many times with other brushes and I've just found that I either have to let things dry or I have to scribble things off to the side, etc. if I want to add more color while I'm working on wet media. But with these, I can just kind of keep going in and adding and it just works because of the way these markers are. So I added all that, I scribbled on even more on the packaging and then used that to just kind of add really light splatter everywhere. <laughs> The last couple of videos I did, I didn't add any splatter and people were like commenting like, you know, is, is everything okay? <laughs> you haven't done any splatter or bling. I was like, trust me, it's coming back. I just, I take detours every once in a while, you know, depending on what I'm making and my mood, but the whole splatter and bling and all that, it's never going to go away. I, I love it. I love the splatter. I love the bling. So I added yellow splatter, then I dried it completely with my heat tool. And then this I'm gonna put in my splat box because I wanna add some white splatter. Um, I didn't bother with the splat box the first time just because it was so light and the Brush Marker Pros, honestly, like, I wipe them up off my mat with a baby wipe or my stamp cleaner, like my little stamp chamois, etc. But when it comes to white, like right here, I'm using the Amsterdam, Amsterdam uh, white liquid ink. I'll have links to everything. But whether it's white craft paint, etc., um, that's a little harder to clean up, especially after it's dry. White paint just sometimes you have to like scrape it off your craft mat. I, I have splatters everywhere, which I don't mind to a degree. It's just I try to eliminate the buildup as much as I can. Like you can see, the inside of my splat box is just covered in paint and spray and all the fun stuff. So added that little bit of splatter, let it completely dry, and then I die cut it with that stitched wafer die. And then ended up flipping this around completely, <laughs> like on end from where I had originally planned to use it. And then I just started figuring out my layout with my little bees. I had white heat embossed one of the sentiments from the Be Yourself set onto some black cardstock. And then I die cut some of Simon Says Stamps Sea Glass cardstock with the scalloped wafer die from that Slim Card Basic set. So now I've kind of got a good idea of how I want everything to go. So for the sentiments and the bees and the hearts, I attach those to the card front just with some thin 3D foam squares. So that just pops them up just that little bit. And then for the actual main panel itself, I'm gonna adhere that to that scallop piece with Simon's Big Mama foam tape. Because again, it gives it that little bit of dimension, but this is half the thickness of standard foam tape, like 3M foam tape, etc. So I coated the back of this with that foam tape and then peeled off the backing and then centered that on this scalloped panel. So got my head in the way and my messy hair, which whatever, <laughs> I'm at home, it doesn't really matter. So got that centered onto the panel. And then for my card base, I have Simon's heavyweight white cardstock. Pulled up my big trimmer. I'm gonna trim down this cardstock to seven inches. So it'll be seven inches by eight and a half inches. 
So after I trim that down, I'm gonna pull out my little score buddy here and my Teflon bone folder. And I will score this at three and a half inches. So it'll be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch uh, slimline card. So got that scored and then I always reinforce the like spine of the card with my bone folder. So yeah, I have, I don't know if when the last time was I raved about the bone folder, but if you don't have one, I highly recommend a Teflon bone folder. It's one of those things that like early on, it's, it's a, it's a big purchase. Like I held off for so long and it literally, it changed everything. I love it. And I've had, I bought mine from Simon, like, I don't even remember how many years ago. It's, it's been years and years and years and I'm still using the same one and it's just amazing. Whereas my other bone folders that I've used or like plastic ones, I've used an actual bone one. And I don't like the bone one, it leaves marks. And the plastic ones, I've gone through so many of them because they just wear out. Whereas this Teflon one has literally lasted. It's worth every penny. So anywho, on the inside of the card, I had white heat embossed another sentiment onto a black piece of cardstock from the Be Yourself set. And then I ended up stamping the little honeycombs with wild honey, distress oxiding, perfectly named. Tim Holtz just comes up with the best names for all the colors. like really they're I love it anyway stamped the honeycomb with the wild honey and then I stamped a couple of the hearts with candied apple distress oxide ink I made sure it was dry off camera I let it sit and dry for a little bit and then I'm going to adhere the sentiment strip to the inside of the card and I just start kind of pulling or like almost folding the card closed that way I've got the sentiment strip kind of lined up properly and it's not pre preventing the card from you know closing properly and then I'm going to adhere those remaining little bees. So then the inside of the card is finished. And then I can adhere the um, scalloped panel card front to the front of this card. So I'm going to adhere that with the same craft tacky adhesive. And then I'm going to add some bling. You don't have to, but you know, I've got five lifetimes of bling <laughs> in my studio here. So I'll never run out and it still doesn't prevent me from ordering more. But anyway, uh, I used Pretty Pink Posh Lemon Drop, Pretty Pink Posh Marigold, and Studio Cadia Onyx Black Crystals. And I'll have links as always with everything. But yeah, chose those three and just kind of sprinkled these all around this card just for that little extra bit of bling. And then once I was kind of happy with where I had placed everything, I just adhered these into place with that craft tacky glue and my little embellishment wand. And then of course I did make a matching envelope uh, using the Trinity Stamps Slimline Envelope Builder Wafer Die Set and another piece of my Doodlebug 12 by 12 cards, like pattern paper that again, I've been hoarding for years. Why I kept ordering it back then, no idea because I never used it, but I am, you know, feeling very smug lately with my hoard of pattern paper because it is coming in so handy for these envelopes. <laughs> so that's it for my card for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like I said, I will have links to everything in the description box below the video. I'll link to my blog post. I'll have the pictures in my blog post. I'll have picture links to everything in the blog post. All that info. Check out the description box below the video for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.